What's going on, good people? Come on, come on, come on in. I got to invite a few people. I'm excited about today's episode, today's podcast. Um, of course, it March is a month of mental health awareness. So today I'm going to bring in a um, mental health professional to come talk to y'all about mental health, answer any questions that y'all have. But first, let me invite some people in for today. I hope y'all day is going well. It has been a busy day, but I am grateful as well as blessed. So I am not going to complain. Come on in. Um, I'm going to, I'm inviting some people in. So if you see me staring at the screen, (laughs) you know what I am doing. Okay, let me find her. Mm-mm. Okay, where is she? Is it this one? Let's see. Come on in, make sure you like, share, subscribe, especially to my YouTube channel, Rika Styles. I think it's 7720, but there are some numbers on there. Hold on one sec, y'all. I got to get the other phone. I'm trying to invite her to the Facebook. My bad, my bad. What's going on? If you want to um, come on to the broadcast with the professional, she'll be on at 2.30. <sighs> Feel free to come on in. We're going to talk about mental health this month. Um, I can share my testimony once she gets on as far as the type of people I've dealt with in dating. <laughs> and what I learned about myself and my mental well-being when dating people. Um, so come on, share, like the um uh, the broadcast or whatnot. Um, like I said, we're going to be talking about mental health today. I'm going to bring on a mental health professional. She's coming on at 2.30. Sorry, I had to leave y'all for a minute and grab my phone because I cannot find her on my you on a, I keep saying YouTube. I guess I need to tell y'all to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Rika Styles. I think it's 7720. Some, some of those kind of numbers after it like, share, and subscribe to broadcast. Um, But a good friend of mine is going to come on and chat in regards to mental health. Like I said, I'm just trying to find her on here. Okay, I found her so I can invite her to the broadcast. Why don't I see her on here? How's y'all day going? How y'all doing? Bear with me as I get this situated, please. Don't cry. Just let her know I'm live. Okay, so like I said, I have the mental health therapist coming on at 2.30. We're going to talk about mental health, but I wanted to check in with y'all in regards to where is your mental health? Like, what are you doing, if anything, to not only understand your your mental health and your your mental well-being, but what does that look like for y'all? Like, are you seeking therapy? Do you have friends and family that you're talking to? Or do you have spiritual mentors that you're able to vibe with and connect with, like, what are you doing to stay sane, to stay um, with your right mindset? I think, I should not think, I know that I shared on um, last week's podcast um, when I really discovered that I needed to go to therapy. And it was, I think it was in November 2019, just to give you a backstory, 2019. 
uh, November 2019. I was already dealing with a lot in regards to like my job, school, personal life, um, horrible relationship I had just come out of. It, it wasn't even a relationship. It was a situation ship. I'm not, it wasn't even a situation ship. <laughs> that it was, I don't even know what's under a situation ship, but it was under that. Anyway, <clears throat> I was going through that and then I had found out my son's father had passed away. And then I end up, so I had all of those emotions and all of that going on. And then I end up going on a cruise that was booked like a year out. I end up going on a, on a cruise. And so I, I dealt with breaking out of a relationship, mourning, um, going through some work stuff. And now I'm on this, this small cruise ship with all these people. And I learned at that moment, I need to go have therapy because I realized at that time, I had social anxiety and I didn't even know that was a thing. Like I didn't even know what social anxiety was. And so like all that really caused me to like, okay, you need to get your mental health in order. You're you're doing some things, you're hurting people that you love, like you're you're just spinning out of control mentally. So I had that's when I took it upon myself to decide to go to therapy. So I asked that question to y'all. For those who are going to therapy, what was that like for you? Um, what was that last straw for you to decide to go to therapy? And how is that working out for you now? For those who do not go to therapy, how come you don't go? Like, what's what's holding you back um, from going to therapy? Let me know your thoughts. I'm still sh sharing and inviting people to the broadcast because I need to have her hop on. She said 2.30, so... If any of y'all want to come on and share your testimony, if any of y'all want to hop on now so that when the therapist does come on here or the licensed professional, I don't want to call her, her therapist. I don't know if that's her complete title. But once she comes on, for you guys to already be on so you can ask her any questions that you may have. I'm not seeing that I can invite her. I don't know what's going on, y'all. Anyway, let me try to let me try to message her. What's up, uh, Jermaine? I'm not sure why. Okay, I invited her. Hopefully, she can come on. What does it say? Anyway, if you want to come on, send me a request and I will approve it. I'm trying to get a hold of the therapist now to let her know that I'm on. I'm trying to send her an invite to come on, but it's not popping up her name. Anyway, what's up? What's up, boom, boom? I miss you, girl. How you doing? I need to stop by and come see you. All right, you want to join? Okay, I'm going to approve you. Boom, boom. Come on. You ain't got to turn, turn the camera on, but come say hi. I, I miss you. It has been a busy day. I don't even, did I eat today? I didn't even eat today, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, boom boom? Hey, baby girl. How you doing? I just got back from Las Vegas. You still going somewhere, honey? That's what it's all about when you join the sixty and over crowd. I'm saying before that too. Shoot, who you go? To, <laughs> who you go to Vegas with? Um, a lot of people. Yeah, that's what's up. You enjoyed yourself? Yeah. Okay. Good. How long was you there for? Um, five days. Okay. okay. Oh, that's a good amount of time to get yeah. in. That's yeah. Okay. So I'm checking out this mental health thing that you got going on here. Yeah. I'm oh. waiting for the, I'm waiting for the professionals to come on. She's supposed to come on at two thirty. Um, so I'm just waiting for her to log on. But yeah, this episode, this month, episodes are gonna focus on mental health. You know, um. 
us as black people, we always been told not to express ourselves that going to therapy is bad, you know, just just a lot of negative things around therapy. And I want to let just let people know it's it's a beautiful thing for you to go to for anyone to go to therapy because you learn you not only learn so many things about yourself, you learn tools, you know, how to navigate life and situations and people. So true. Yeah. After my brother had died, I ended up having a mental health crisis. Yeah. And both of my brothers, it sent me through some crazy stuff. And yeah. I tell you, um, I have a black therapist, mm -hmm. psychiatrist, mm -hmm. and they are really good at what they talk about to keep you going. Good. Yeah. You're still going? Oh, definitely. Okay. Oh, yeah. How much? Yeah. What? What? I'm trying to think of what question I want to ask you. What has been the most result of thing that you can take away from therapy? That's a good question. I I take away a little bit of everything. Everything that she gives me, I take away. Yeah. Because, I mean, she brought me back to a place where I used to be. Yeah. And now I'm back. I'm back. What do you mean where you used to be? I was happy. Yeah. And when I went through my mental illness, I was down, sad, out. You name it. I was it. I was a wreck. Yeah. And now I'm back to where I used to be. I'm happy. I'm when going you, through therapy. When did, you go ahead, realize, when did you realize you needed to go to therapy? Like, what was that moment for you? I had a breakdown. And my kids noticed that in me. Yeah. And they took me in to be observed. And that's when I found out I was having a nervous breakdown. So, yeah. I think that my kids were there. Yeah. We got, we got a dope family. So, you know, we're always there for each other. Um, yeah. I don't know if you watched last week's episode, but Sadia. You know, she ended up coming on and just kind of sharing her testimony of, you know, when her um, latest um, partner had yes. passed away or yes. what. I, I didn't hear about that. I didn't know that you guys yeah. she was on there, but I'm glad she had a chance to talk yeah. about that. And we connect often, you know, I often check in with my cousins and my siblings of those numbers I do have or whatever, you know, just to check in, you know, being one of the strong ones. I rarely get checked in on. And so I make it my initiative to check in on, on, on others because I want somebody to check in on me. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But yes. that's, that's also why I do the podcast to allow myself to allow myself the ability to share and vent and just help other people, you know, shed some light to their lives. Um I talked to Jesse, he called over the weekend. Um and I, I was, it was it was like bittersweet because it's like a it's like a often routine with him. You know, he goes to treatment, get well for a little bit, make broken promises. Um, you know, the cycle continues, and it it just it's triggering for me because it it reminds me of um, Ricky. Yeah. Sometimes you know, my mom will say, "Oh, your dad's coming to pick you up," and then he never comes yeah. to pick me up for whatever. So talking to him. I realized never before I I couldn't put words to what I was feeling, but I was able to identify what that was when I was talking to this weekend. Like it's triggering yeah. to talk to him because there's so much false hope that he doesn't follow through, that he doesn't follow through on stuff. And it's like, therefore, I'm tuned out. I don't listen. I don't believe you. you know? Right. Yeah. But it was it was good. Yeah, it was good to hear from him, though, just to know that he's alive. You know, he may not be doing the best, but it's nice that every time he come out, <laughs> he always calling me, what up, big sis? Yeah. Uh, it's like, uh, <laughs> so I'm honored that he tells me the truth, but he also calls to check on me and just let me know, you know, he's okay. So it was good hearing from him, but I just really hope and pray that he get his life right, you know, like. And I was sharing with him, like seeing him in the ICU with all those tubes what? connected to him. This was like years ago. This was probably this was probably like 2000. And, yeah, when did I start here? This was probably like 2006, 
17 maybe 16 yeah he, he um he said he ended up going to a party and they ended up lacing his weed with some stuff that caused him to kind of be like yeah. out of it and yeah. they ended up calling the ambulance because he overdosed and he tried to jump out of the ambulance so this was many oh. years ago yeah. but again still seeing him in that state like damn near dead i'm like I, I can't picture you like that. Like, that isn't good for my mental, you know. But all I can do is just surrender him to God and pray over him and know that. Yeah. I hope he, he get better and he, he be okay. Oh, at but, yeah, it's it's triggering to talk to him. Oh, I realize that. Yeah. I realize that. And I know he's not in the right mental state for me to have that conversation yeah. with him. And, and that's fine. Um, and eventually, I hope that it can get there. Um so yeah but other than that i've been good i actually just got off the phone with my therapist our zoom our zoom call yeah and so i'm like mental health is real talking to someone is definitely necessary and real what's up amber how you doing i'm good how are you i'm good i'm gonna try to call this therapist y'all talk some on yourself for a few moments hi amber i'm sure um 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 or key I'm getting it all wrong. My niece's auntie. <laughs> she got unique. She got Rakia. She got, I mean, hey, she got, hey, I'm her auntie. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too, honey. And I'm glad she's having this podcast talking about mental health. A lot of times, People don't want to talk about it, but it's a real thing amongst us black people, brown skin. It's it's really something that we all need to go through. Most definitely, most definitely. You always have to get your mental health fixed. Yeah. Yes. Okay, she's coming on. Here she go. All right, praise God. I'm like, come on, God. Oh, okay. Now I said she denied it. Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know it's gonna be a good session when you just have technical difficulties you know what i'm saying oh so, yeah what it is let me try to yeah again okay except don't there we go good afternoon hello, hello. Hi, i'm good so good good awesome Okay, I just want to do a disclaimer real quick for those who are not speaking. If you can please mute your phone so that we can hear the person that's speaking. I appreciate you and thank you all. Um, so this month we're focused on, I know it's Dating Chronicles, but there's a lot of things that come uh, in Dating Chronicles aligned to mental health. And so this month our episodes are going to focus on mental health. And so my desire is to continue to talk to um, mental health professionalists, therapists in this field so they can give um, some leeway. I know you have a busy schedule, so I'm not trying to keep you on here long. I think I told you 15, 20 minutes and know you're busy but if you want to introduce yourself yeah. and let the people know what do you do what do you what do you specialize is and we can just go from there yeah so my, my name is denise williams i'm a licensed marriage and family therapist um i uh, have been practicing for almost 14 years now um and I, I recently opened my own private practice last may um my position before um going into private practice was at a wellness center and I worked with many couples. I worked with, for the pipe trades um, with many of the uh, plumbers and pipe fitters and their families. Um, so individual therapy with um, a lot of the men and then I worked with some of the wives as well and then the children and then some family therapy. So lots of combinations there. Um, a lot of my experience prior to that was with the homeless population. That's um, what my passion is, is working with people facing homelessness. Um, and so I have experience working with homeless children um, who are like runaways or that are put out of their homes as well as teenagers who are precariously housed, couch hopping kind of living on their own now in the shelter system or transitional housing system. Um, and so that's been a big chunk of my experience. And then like nonprofit management types of things. But regarding therapy is um, a lot of homelessness experience. And then with a lot of couples um, that were a part of the pipe trades, my practice has a 
couple of different sectors to it. Um, so I work with some EAPs for professionals, um, the employment assistance programs. Uh, we provide therapy to them. Um, they usually have five or six free sessions, and then they will continue with their insurance after that. Um, I am aware of some scholarships um, and foundations that I connect people with if they are underinsured or un uninsured or they have an insurance that we don't accept. Um, I provide some life coaching as well <clears throat> um, because in order to practice therapy, they have to live in Minnesota. But with life coaching, you can go across state lines. Um, and then I'm um, working a school as well, providing services um, to a high school in Minneapolis. Um, and then also um, a nonprofit agency um, working with the, the adolescents, again, providing groups. We provide holistic services um, to the young people. So trauma-informed yoga, art-inspired therapy, meditation. Um, we have a juicing class. Um, and a cooking class, different things like that. So really looking at all the ways that someone can cope with their mental health, um, including therapy, but therapy isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then also that's one hour a week, two hours a week if you're lucky. Um, and so what can you do on your own time to help um, stabilize your mental health? That's awesome. So you hit a lot of different spectrums and you have a lot of experience in different areas. Mm -hmm. So that's good you're not, you have different, um, pathways you're not just on one so i think that will hit on a lot of people uh, for those who are on do you have any particular or specific questions that you would like to ask uh miss denise no not that i can think of. okay amber did you have any particular questions i mean you know i, I stay with questions so mm -hmm. i'm just letting everybody else get a chance to say something. if they come to me i'll let you know okay okay so the first, one of the first questions I want to ask you is, what may be some signs of one dealing with depression? Yes. Um, so depression is very common, um, as we know. I just plugged on my phone. Okay, there we go. Um, so it's very common depression and anxiety. So a lot of times when people have their mental health assessed, um, you know, those are some of the most common diagnoses. So um, most of the time, there's definitely um, a low mood for more days than not. Mm -hmm. um, so four or five days a week feeling low. Um, um, and then there's different types of depression also that I don't think most people know about. Um, but there is sometimes a sense of hopelessness um, mm -hmm. where when you're thinking about the future, you know, you're not really excited about anything. You're not looking forward to anything. That can be a sign. Um, uh, withdrawal isolation is definitely very popular and common um, in terms of things that um, you used to be interested in, you're no longer interested in. Um, so that could look like, um, you know, you used to like working out, all of a sudden you're fatigued. Uh, fatigue is another symptom, uh, more, than ab more than normal fatigue. Um, and you, you're not feeling the energy to hang out with friends. If you used to go to church, you're not going to church. Um, you used to kind of um, hang out with friends. You used to um, do maybe community service, um, do activities with your kids. You might find yourself in the bed more, um, you know, in the room with uh, the, the curtains pulled. You're not eating really, no appetite. Low appetite is another symptom. Mm -hmm. Disturbance of appetite, disturbance of sleeping. And that can be insomnia and you're up all night or that can be hypersomnia. Um, where you're sleeping all the time. Um, uh, those are the the most common. One I, one thing I want to point out is for adolescents, um, depression can often come across as irritability. Mm. And I don't think people realize that. And so if you have a young person who is usually more mild-mannered um, and all of a sudden they're like snappy, you know, again, they're pulling away, they're hanging out in their room more. They don't want you talking to them. Um, you know, uh, again, not really eating. Appetite changes. Um, sleeping pattern changes. Um, a lot of times the irritability and anger can be signs of depression for a young person because they don't really know how to articulate what's going on. And then you have the hormonal changes going on. Um, <clears throat> and so those would be signs to look for. So it's like a general change in the demeanor where someone um, is pulling away, they're uh, more alone more, things they used to enjoy doing, they no longer enjoy doing them, so they stop doing them. Um, tearfulness, hopelessness, um, generally low mood, 
um, not showering, you know, um, the self-care piece um, is lower. Used to get your hair done, no longer doing that. Used to get nails done, no longer doing that. So it really um, is like a damper, you know, mm -hmm. that just a cloud yeah. that comes. Um, and it can be really difficult to get from under the cloud. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that. What advice would you give someone who, who is dealing with depression? Yeah, I think um, being honest with self. You know, because all of us have bad days, you know, all of us have symptoms, if you will, of different things. Um, what makes something diagnosable is when it's uh, pervasive and it's entering, you know, three or more areas of your life and affecting your functioning. But all of us have bad days. All of us sometimes want to be alone. You know, we all may be tearful when we're going through difficult periods. Mm -hmm. That's also a difference, you know, situational versus like a longer term situation yeah. for major depression you need to be like depressed for at least two weeks of the month um but um i think being honest with oneself on like do i feel like myself you know is this situational mm -hmm. is something going on at work is there something going on in a personal relationship um you know where you can say this is what's contributing to the way that i'm feeling specifically yeah. you can draw that link um you know our children's behavior or you, you know if you have adult children their relationships can really have an effect on parents if they're struggling, if your children are struggling. Um, so trying to figure out, do you know why you feel the way you feel? And then, um, you know, holistic treatment of depression is looking at um, several things. You know, are you comfortable talking to a therapist um, and just having an outlet so that someone can provide kind of, rear, you know, mirrors, um, mm -hmm. see if there's any blind spots that you aren't considering. Um, and um, so that's one avenue, uh, medication, you know, in the black community, we don't talk about that, but that is an option because there can be um, a brain chemistry imbalance. Um, mm -hmm. So no matter how much you're working out, how, no matter how many fruits and vegetables you're eating, um, you know, that fatigue, it can, you know, have somatic symptoms, you have body aches, you have headaches, you know, you have a nervous stomach, um, diarrhea, all of those things can also come from it. Um, and so looking at the, you the diet, you know, we talk about uh, more fruits and vegetables, more protein. If you're yeah. eating a um, a lot of sugar or a lot of carbs and you're already depressed, um, when you crash from that sugar, you're already mm -hmm. low. Yeah. <laughs> so if zero is like the baseline for someone that's depressed, I always look at it as them being like at a negative five. So then when they crash from the sugar of what they're eating, now they're at a negative 10. Wow. So you need to try to work your way all the way up to zero, which can feel like a huge, you know, task. Okay. Whereas if you're, you know, at that negative five, but you're eating the protein and the fruits and vegetables, so that's giving you energy, you know, maybe you're coming up to a negative three, a negative two, you're closer to zero than the negative 10. Mm -hmm. um, so diet, exercise, I always tell people, you know, getting your heart rate up um, at least 30 minutes a day, three times a week, it does the same thing as an antidepressant pill. Mm, that's good. Um, that's so good. really trying to, you know, um jumping jacks um burpees um you know marching in place jogging in place um walking around the block a few times at a nice pace you know because you want to be winded you want to get your heart rate up it does the exact same thing for you um as an antidepressant pill so for people who are anti um, medication and they don't want to introduce that into their system i say okay well that means you're gonna need more willpower you know um, is there a neighbor or a friend that can go walking with you or can you set alarms on your phone to remind you to get up and do something to get your heart rate up? Um, does anyone know that you're feeling down? So someone, like you said, can be checking on you is really important yeah. um, because with depression comes depressive thoughts. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so those depressive thoughts, because that's what's um, affected by your the brain chemistry that's off, um, the chemical imbalance and so if you're in a dark room it's telling you this feels comfortable you know if you're alone like we want to be alone we don't feel like dealing with people you know mm -hmm. um if you're not showering you don't need to shower you didn't do anything today or yesterday you know you don't need to eat you're not really hungry why force yourself to eat when you're not so your mind will 
tell you these things to make you stay in that place mm -hmm. um, because the chemistry is off. Um, so in order mm -hmm. to undo and kind of reverse that pattern, it has to be like counterintuitive. Um, and you have to do the opposite of what your brain is telling you to do. So if you're, if you want to stay in the dark and it just feels so like comfy, you know, open mm -hmm. the curtains, sunshine does a lot. Um, if, um, you're not eating, it's like eat a small salad, you know, just some, some greens and what's your favorite, um, you know, dressing that you like to eat. You know, a lot of times people won't do things cause they don't enjoy them anymore. So I say, well, what did you used to enjoy? Who did you used to be? Let's revisit that because you do have muscle memory. So you can like reawaken who you used to be in order to help get you out of the slump. Um, and so I think being honest with yourself about how long you've been feeling that way. Um, if Is there a direct link? Can you pinpoint? Well, I wasn't feeling this way before this happened, but now I'm feeling this way. Um, or is it just like a blur? Like, I don't know, it's been three months. Like, that's a long time, you know, and nothing significant happened three months ago. If you just all of a sudden started feeling down. Um, and um, you know, telling someone, a lot of times we keep it to ourselves. So mm -hmm. telling a friend, you know, I'm not quite feeling well, so they can invite you out. You know, they can come over. You can watch some funny shows together. Yeah. Um, because again, those depressive thoughts will make you stay alone um, and um, enjoyable experiences. So that holistic treatment of depression, therapy, psychiatry, which is medication, um, diet, exercise, and then the most important piece um, that's within someone's control would be um, enjoyable experiences. So if you don't enjoy anything now, what did you used to enjoy? I remember working with an older woman um, when I was in internship um, over 10 years ago and um, feeling really down, couldn't really think of anything that she enjoyed anymore. <laughs> And um, then it just occurred to her, her grandkids, she really enjoyed her grandkids. And um, she was seeing them once a week or once every other week. And I said, you know, um, is there a reason that it's only once a week? Can we up that, you know, to two times a week, three times a week? You know, can you bake some cookies and drop them off or have them come bake cookies with you? Can you help the parents out at all, pick them up from bus stops? Because when you're feeling down, again, if you look at that zero and those negative numbers, um, if if you know, seeing the kids boost you a little bit, you want to do three times as much to get you above that zero. Um, so whatever you enjoy, if it's healthy, you know, go all in. Um, if there's a friend you like hanging out with, you know, see if they have a little bandwidth to, to spend some time with you. Um, because those enjoyable experiences does the same thing as the exercise, does the same thing as the antidepressants, um, which is shift the brain chemistry um, to help you feel better. That's Good. That's something. One thing I didn't know is the thirty days, you know, thirty minutes, three times, three times a week can replace as an anti-depression. I never knew that. So that's mm -hmm. something. Something good. Um, do any of y'all have any comments on what uh, Ms. Denise just spoke about? I love it. It's all positive. Um, um, I learned some of that on my own because my psychiatrist didn't tell me what you're going through and. Um, I think it's fantastic. I watch my grandbaby as much as I can, and it gives me a, a boost mm -hmm. so big. Mm -hmm. It makes me so happy and mm -hmm. joyful just to be here with the little one. Yeah. The other ones are grown, but I try to check in, you know, on them every chance I get. But um, thank you for saying that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It, it it does matter and it helps, you know, but sometimes small things <clears throat> like we would know that the grandkids, you know, because um, my mom is like really involved with my kids um, and they do bring her so much joy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, sometimes we wouldn't look at that as like a coping strategy, you know, like they're just my grandkids. I'm just helping out. But it's like, how do they make you feel? How do you feel after they leave? You know, um, with clients, sometimes I do a depression timeline where um, I'll have them write, um, you know, draw a timeline with little tick marks, and then um, think about anything that gave you that boost above zero. So if zero is the line, mm -hmm. you know, did you um, get your favorite cup of coffee or your favorite creamer? And you were just like, oh, it's just delicious. That goes above the line, you know? Yeah. Um, did your favorite show come on and you were able to catch it? That goes above the line. Did you talk to a friend you haven't talked to in a while? 
that's above the line, you know. Um, did you get any bad news? Or someone came around and they brought your spirit down that goes below the line mm -hmm. because it helps you look at kind of what your life looks like on a day-to-day -day basis and how things are impacting you so you can be more intentional. If someone brought you below that line and you're already feeling down, we might need some more space and time between when you see them again. We got to look at that. Um, and unfortunately, sometimes those are people that's closest to us, you know, so yeah. then that's a further conversation. Um, but yeah, anything to get you above the line and then to get you from one positive experience to another. Um, and then slowly but surely, you know, that helps people feel better for an extended period of time. Awesome. I have one more question yeah. for you. Um, so being a person... This happened many years ago. I ended up dating a narcissist. And while I was dating him, I did not know he was a narcissist until after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, seeing that this, this is also a dating podcast, mm -hmm. how would you, what tips would you give to someone to look out for a narcissist? Like what are, I know for a person to be categorized as a narcissist, they have to hit so many within the yeah. category. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of elaborate <laughs> for what people should um, look out to look out look out for to make sure they're not dating a narcissist or if they if they are how do they get out of that situation yeah. yeah so i think one of the most important things with dating is making sure you know and i and i know that you're you know a minister so i know that that intersects um but really you want to look for people who are equally yoked to you and sometimes a desperation loneliness and things can make us drop the, the bar you know and our expectations lower mm -hmm. um and so, you know, one of my words this year, um, it's like a New Year's resolution type of thing is ease. Like things should flow, you know. Um, so conf early on conflict, even if it's about small things, red flag. Like why are we arguing about, you know, where we want to go for dinner or, you know, um, what time someone got off. Like if you can't even arrange a date without conflict, red flag. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, um, if you are trying to you want someone that's emotionally available also sometimes narcissists are not emotionally available and so if you're talking about a bad day and there's no empathy there or there's like um well you should know to do this or yeah. you know like why would you feel that way you know there's no oh i'm so sorry you're you know experiencing that um you know like what can i do you want me to come over you want to go for a walk um you know like what have you done that's been helpful before like really putting the attention on you um and i think sometimes with narcissism because it is a self-centered um you know type of personality um, a person can't give you that emotional availability to really focus on you and what's going on with you and love and care. And so I think empathy is huge also. Um, and a lot of people actually don't have it because it's um, something that's learned. A baby isn't born with empathy. And so depending on how you're raise like you have to have it role modeled and you have to learn it and so um a lot of times people who are, that are adults who lack empathy they weren't taught empathy um mm -hmm. and so not that it can't be corrected but someone would definitely have to want to correct that yeah. you know and say oh is this behavior you know hurting you so this would be another piece if you tell someone when you do this it hurts me or it makes me feel this way, you shouldn't be like gaslighted, you know, or made to blamed in some way of like, oh, you're being sensitive or, um, you know, uh, deflecting, you know, onto something that you did, like a tit for tat kind of a thing. It should be again met with love and compassion of, oh, that wasn't my intention. How should I say it next time? Or, you know, um, you know, what can I do differently so that you can like hear me? Um, and so I think that those, those things are, are really helpful. Empathy, emotional availability, and the the, the um, ability to truly focus on someone else and what they're going through without like interjecting their own stuff, you know, holding space for someone else. That's mm -hmm. really difficult for people to do also. Um, you know, sit in silence, you know, it doesn't have to be filled with noise or with chatter. Sometimes it's just sitting there arm to arm when someone's had a bad day, the willingness to do that without getting anything in return. Mm -hmm. That would be something else, you know, a lot of times in order to get someone's time, um, you know, they want something, you know, they'll give you some time, but you know, there's an expectation at the end. <clears throat> um, in terms of like what to do if you realize that you're dating someone who doesn't have empathy, who, um, who doesn't hold space for you, who doesn't have emotional availability. 
um, you know, you could do that timeline we talked about, you know, start trying to look at things objectively, like what components of the relationship are above the line and, and bring me joy, fill my cup, you know, mm -hmm. and what in this relationship brings me below the line and what's more happen what's happening more frequently, just so you can have an objective look and then look at it over a month or two to see are there patterns going on. You can always talk to a therapist about it. One thing that I love about therapy is like, I don't know my clients when I first meet them. So there's no reason for me to, you know, sway them in any direction. Um, and so that objectivity, I think, can be really helpful, um, you know, just to hear, you know, from the outside in. And of course, like therapists aren't supposed to give advice, but it's more so about helping people find their own way you know well how did you feel when he or she said that were you able to communicate how that made you feel and if you weren't why were you hesitant you know mm -hmm. um what what is the typical response if you give your feedback on how you, you feel um so outside of what you can do um something else would be like gray rock um is something that they talk about um and how to deal with a narcissist um so that gray mean, rock yeah, gray rock them, the color. Gray. The color. Okay. Um, so they talk about um, if you read about narcissism um, or like narcissism um, relationships where someone's a narcissist, they talk about a supply and mm -hmm. they call the person that's not the narcissist the supply of the narcissist. Um, and that's because um, a lot of times the energy is being drawn from the supply, you know, and so that's why sometimes narcissists they look for different, you know, um, options if you will on how to like draw the energy um out of all those supplies um you know where there is um the gaslighting you know the gentle putting you down mm -hmm. um um not um supporting your decisions or minimizing your successes minimizing um your experiences so you know like over time you just become smaller and smaller and smaller and then what's happening to them they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger because they're draining all of the energy and motivation and joy from you um and so gray rocking um is something that um is used in terms of like realizing that the dynamic is happening like wow like i was having a great day and I talked to this person and all of a sudden, like, I am exhausted. There is nothing <laughs> left. Um, like, what that. happened? Oh, you know, goodness. instead of yeah. the person like, oh, wow, congratulations, let's go celebrate. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you know, questioning, you know, why something happened that way. Why the decisions you made happen that way. And you're like explaining and defending and all of a sudden you're deflated. Like, you no longer have what you had. Um, yeah. So with gray rocking, you realize that dynamic is happening. Um, and you stop providing the supply. So um, you keep everything um, short. Um, you don't go into detail. Um, you don't give them any, like, you know, hairline way in, in terms of where you're starting to defend or explain or all of those things that's going on. So, you know, how was your day? Oh, good. Even if you got a promotion, you're not going there because there will be this discussion about, you know, well, didn't you just get a promotion yeah. or, you know, like, are you on six month probation, aren't you? Or what happened oh. with that situation with your coworker? Yeah. You didn't get in trouble for that? Like unrelated, you know, some recent conversations like, yeah, it's time for a shift. Yeah. Someone asked, it says, uh, you may have to explain what equal equally to oh equally oh. yoked i think that's what you said but they might have a typo so uh cashmere she's speaking equally yoked for those who are who are spiritual and believers um the word of god says do not be unequally yoked with people meaning like your faith walk your spiritual walk like if you are a person that's faith filled holy ghost filled like don't associate or don't try to get in a relationship with somebody who is not filled with the holy spirit who is not who doesn't believe in Jesus Christ or, you know, have the same beliefs as you is on the same spiritual journey as you, because it's going to bring you down. It's going to hold you back. It's going to, it's going to set you back in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And I'm speaking to myself when I say that, but <laughs> that's what she meant when she said equally yoked, you know, I just, it's just confirmation of what I got to do. Amber, you gave me a word on Sunday. So this whole episode mm -hmm. is confirmation of what you said, Amber, walk away, which is something I'll be doing which is walking away. But anyway, um, did you finish explaining about narcissists? Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing I want to say about spirituality too, in terms of like the treatment of depression. So I'm a, a licensed therapist 
who is a spiritual person, um, believe in Jesus Christ. And um, it's a fine line you have to play, you know, when you're a therapist um, and you're also um, a believer. And what I usually do is, um, you know, when you do an intake, that's a question on like, what role does spirituality play um, in your life? And a lot of times it's very interesting how God sends me clients who are believers and then we're able to loop that into the process to figure out you know like have you been away from the church you know for a while are you missing that Mm -hmm. um you know when was the last time you went do you enjoy where you used to go do you want to um look at some other places um you know like um i mean i've talked about you know demonic types of things with clients um It's just really, really interesting how God, you know, because I am open to it, he will bring, you know, clients in my direction. So on my website, I do say that, you know, um, our providers are open um, to providing that peace. Like, I wouldn't say that I'm a spiritual counselor, but if a client Mm -hmm. wants to go there to figure out how spirituality can be strengthened um, and be a part of their healing, um, because that social outlet you can get, you know, um, through your church community, um, you can build up your, your strength and your faith through your church community. And so um, that does not have to be a piece that's completely separate and left out of mental health. So I just wanted to add that. Um, but yeah, I would I would um, encourage people to look up the gray rock piece um, because you'll see how a partner would um, yeah. respond to you once you stop um, elaborating on things so that that critique, that's the word there, critique, isn't always there on what you're doing and why you're doing it that way. Um, So when you no longer provide that narrative for them to dig into, um, usually people will go cold, you know, and so that's how they turn off the interest on you and and, and towards another supply because you're no Mm -hmm. longer feeding that ability um, to to put you down. So then they got to find it somewhere else. I have a follow up question and then um, I'll ask you your contact and personal information. So the follow up question is that does a narcissist know so does a narcissist know that they are not. Does a narcissist know they are a narcissist if they're not professionally diagnosed? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Um, So with personality disorders, um, people, and for people without personality disorders, like we all just believe we are who we are, you know? Um, And so when people tell us, you know, oh, when you do this, it makes me feel that way. Or, you know, like we have to, you know, one, do we believe that? Two, do we want to put energy in shifting how we're showing up and how we're presenting um, do we care how we're making other people feel? All of those are things. Some people just ignore it completely and just says, well, I, we're not meant to be around each other then, you know. So most of the time, specifically with personality disorders, because they're really rigid um, mm-hmm. traits that people have, um, they don't know that they are. And when you try to point it out and show them, you know, um, defensiveness, um, rejection, um, gaslighting, mm-hmm. you know, um, because usually our personality traits and the different, you know, even some symptoms that people have, they do serve a purpose. So up until that point, you know, it's either kept people away so that they're emotionally and psychologically safe, you know, mm-hmm. so keep an emotional distance there, um, or it's a power differential. It keeps them feeling, you know, um, elevated in some way um, um, from other people because they're not emotionally attached in the same way or um, they're benefiting Um, but they are not giving anything, you know, Mm -hmm. and so most people don't know that they have it when they have it, Um, and it takes a lot of work, like humbleness, um, and um, it's really humbleness to say, like, wow, I I had no idea, Um, you know, well, what what else could I do? How can I be different for you? Like, it it takes a lot in order for someone to be willing um, to engage in change because change process is long you know it's not overnight um and then you have some back steps and you got to try again and so um it takes a lot of work one person i had saw mentioned about their partner being muslim um one thing i will say about that so i do work with muslim clients also it's it's amazing the things that god does um specifically around marriage and preparing for marriage um and what i what i will say is that um as a therapist I accept whatever clients bring to me, you mm-hmm. know, and so when a client, you know, especially once you start working with people, it spreads in the community. So, you know, like, you know, I know someone that you've worked with and you help them in this way. Um, and so I basically allow the client to be an expert in themselves, you know, wow. so 
Um, what are you looking for? You know, what type of mate are you looking for? Um, and is the person that you're currently with, do they meet those expectations? And then um, what type of partner do you want to be to them? And mm -hmm. are you there or is there some growth area that needs to happen for you to get there? Um, and that I found that that tends to work with people because I'm not projecting my beliefs onto them. Um, okay. It's more so about, you know, what their beliefs are, what the home dynamic um, is, financial response. Hmm? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Um, financial, financial responsibilities, you know, those types of things. Um, and then we go from there. So clients are supposed to be able to be the expert on their situations and their desires for the future what they want to accomplish and then i just help them move in that direction okay mm -hmm. okay can you um let the people know your contact information mm -hmm. let them know if you are currently if you or your organization is currently accepting um new patients and how can they can get a hold of you yeah. and then after this can you also um send me a message on messenger with all your conflict your contact information with your abbreviation so i can put that in the live description yeah, that's what I was thinking about, writing okay. a comment with my number. Okay, um, so my Thank practice you. is Life Curation, um, and um, that's L-I-F-E-C-U-R-A-T-I-O-N, and that's P-L-L-C for Professional LLC. Um, and I do have a, uh, I just put my business phone number there in the okay. comments, and then I'll put my website, which is www.lifecuration.plc.com. Um, and then my email address also. So I do have a group practice, um, which is great. I, I always intended to work with a group of people. I didn't want to work alone. Yeah. So I have uh, maybe six therapists that I work with, and then I have people who aren't therapists oh. that I also work with that help provide services in the nonprofits. Um, we have two office spaces. We have one in St. Paul on West 7th, and we have one in Uptown um, on Lagoon. Um, we are accepting new clients. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we accept an array of insurances. Um, and then, like I said, there are a couple of foundations also that we go through. Loveland is one of them. I'll write that in the comment okay. box, babe. Um, it's one for women. And um, you can um, apply there uh, quarterly. So they have a window that opens quarterly and then closes when it's full and then it opens again um, the next quarter. But with that one, you get 12 free uh therapy sessions through Loveland. Okay. Um, and then the other one is Boris Lawrence Henson Foundation. So if anyone knows um, Taraji uh, P. Henson, the actress, so this yep. is her foundation that she has for her father okay. um, and his name. And um, I started using them immediately when I opened last May. Okay. Um, and they give you five free therapy sessions. Um, <clears throat> and um, it's just been really helpful. Um, but yeah, I, you know, therapy, I think can be intimidating. What I'll say is, um, you know, give providers a chance. Um, you can always ask for a, um, um, like assessment session, you know, where you, uh, or, a um, where you're getting to know the provider and they're getting to know you. Mm -hmm. Um, and you can ask your questions. They're usually about 15 or 20 minutes. Um, and um, you can figure out if someone is is right for you. Um, you do have to find the best fit. You know, yes. it's just like a, a, a physical, you know, medical doctor. Um, I work with lots of professionals that um, I network with. Um, and so if I'm not the right fit or if I'm full, I'm always full. I'll say that <laughs> on here. Um, yes. But I work with a lot of therapists um, that I can connect people with. Okay. Um, and... Um, yeah, I think you just give people, a, you know, a try um, and see how it goes. And if that doesn't work, that doesn't mean the whole field doesn't work. You just, you know, you find someone else that can connect with you. Um, yeah. So a lot of the clients that I have worked with, I've worked with a long time, you know, because people, you know, go into maintenance once things are are fine and then something else in life pops up and then they'll, they'll come back because it is yeah. that type of yeah yes i can be somebody, text on that number okay and on my business somebody number. asks how can they donate to your organization can they do that through the website as well yeah they, they can email on there um i have thought about that in terms of um i um uh, was looking for ways to fund clients who were uninsured or underinsured so okay. we could we could definitely look at that like sponsorship is what i was looking okay. for for clients um and um yeah it's it's uh it's a great 
it's a great thing. I, I really enjoy the field. I appreciate you taking the time to come on and explain some things um, for y'all who didn't catch the whole thing. Make sure you go back. Uh, Miss Denise, she went over narcissism. She went over depression. So make sure you all go back onto the um to the live and just rewatch it she put some resources in there for if you need a sponsorship to get therapy she does 12 free sessions mm -hmm. quarterly and she also put another uh research on there resource mm -hmm. excuse me for a five free session and that comes from the taraji p henshin foundation mm -hmm. that she had made in love of her father so again i appreciate all y'all hopping on miss denise i will talk to you because i definitely need to collab mm -hmm. with you on some things Let's do um, it. And y'all enjoy y'all day. And remember, be bold, be blessed, be beautiful. Most of all, be you. Thank y'all. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank yeah. you all. Thank You're you. Bye -bye. See you later. Bye.